It's an exciting time. It's the month of May, an opportunity to really focus in and grow intentionally with Our Lady and our relationship with her. I'm super pumped to get to share with you one of my absolute favorite Marian devotions through the years, which you've probably never actually heard of before. Hey, I'm Father Mark Mary with the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal. And this is Ascension Presents. It is that beautiful time of year again, the month of May, where in the Catholic Church we have a special focus and intentionality on growing in our devotion to Our Lady and in giving her um, a special time of honoring and special place in our spiritual lives. We're going to talk about Our Lady in some very, very practical, a little bit creative, a little bit fresh ways that we can grow in this, this relationship. There's a thousand ways in which we can talk about why we should grow in devotion and love of Our Lady. I'm going to do so just through, through one particular lens, the lens of the great saints in the Catholic Church in the last century. And so I'm thinking of St. Maximilian Colby, and I'm thinking of Padre Pio, and I'm thinking of St. Mother Teresa, and I'm thinking of John Paul II, St. John Paul II. And what did they all have in common? Great holiness, great devotion to Our Lady. That's not by accident, folks. And think of like Maximilian Colby writing about the Immaculata all day, all night. His love of, of Our Lady is unquestionable. St. Padre Pio could hardly be found without a rosary, without his weapon in his hands as he's doing spiritual battle. St. Mother Teresa, who had an incredible love of Our Lady, again, could hardly be found without a rosary in her hand, who gave out probably millions of miraculous medals through her travels. Like there's no doubt Our Lady... Um, had a really privileged place in the spirituality and in the heart of Saint Mother Teresa and then Saint John Paul II, right? Saint John Paul II, m- massive figure, one of the greatest lives ever lived by a human being, incredible disciple of Jesus and his papal motto, right? Totus to us, all yours, Mary. People, this is not by accident. Um, their love of Our Lady was not, it's not like parsley on top of a little, a little dish, not a little sprinkling, a little aesthetic. It's integral. It's integral to what they're doing. And we want, we want the same outcome. We want holiness. So it just makes sense that we're going to use the same ingredients, including this really intense filial love of Mary. What we're talking about again, like we're about holiness. We're about radical discipleship. In other words, we're about giving Jesus permission to live his life in us and through us. Amen? Amen. And what are foundational aspects of the life of Jesus. Uh, Number one, Jesus loved his mom. He honored his mom. He spoke with his mom. He spent time with his mom. Jesus loves Mary and Jesus tells Mary that he loves her and Jesus listens to Mary and Jesus rests and finds comfort in her presence. Jesus wants to continue to live this same aspect of his life through us. He wants us to honor Our Lady as our own mother as well. And then secondly, kind of on the reverse, is Jesus was mothered by Mary. She comforted him, she guided him, she formed him, she instructed him. This is a gift that Jesus wants to give us. He wants us to to have a share in his own being mothered by, cared for, loved by, gazed upon by Our Lady. Again, it's it's not like, let's not, let's not overcomplicate things. Jesus wants to live his life through us. And part of that is having this relationship with Mary's mother. Both us towards her, loving her, honoring her, reverencing her as we do our mothers. And then secondly, this, allowing her to mother us um, in the order of grace. And why? Because we want holiness and because the world needs needs saints, radical disciples of Jesus Christ. And I know y'all love Our Lady. And I know you already have your ways in which um, every day you're, you're engaged with her, you're in a relationship with her, you're praying your rosary. So I'm going to kind of go a little bit creative, a little bit outside the box, and offer some other sort of complementary devotions, practices, ways to really, really make this a Marian month. I read this from uh, a Dominican priest the other day and it just was like, duh. He said, "Uh, good spirituality needs to be rooted in good theology. And so as we're trying to grow in our love of Our Lady, in our, our spirituality, our Catholic, authentic Catholic spirituality of loving Mary as our mother, we want to make sure it's also grounded in good theology. And I'm going to probably be doing this a lot more and more. Like, the catechism is an absolute treasure. And again, it's one of our most underutilized tools in our Catholic toolbox. And, and the catechism, it has a beautiful, 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 condensed, precise, thorough 
um, section on Mary. And it's chapter 963. Chapter 963, Mother of Christ, Mother of the Church. I'm going to offer that to you. It's like three or four pages. You can read it pretty quickly. You can read it a couple times. It's a great way to, to really be renewed in, at least on the intellectual level, our understanding of what this relationship with Mary is all about and where it comes from. And um, for me as well, it also sort of gets my heart excited. Uh, we'll drop a link below. If you don't have the catechism, it's available free online. We'll drop a link below. Check it out. It'll be worth your time. I promise. Number two is this. And I'm super excited about this because it's one of my absolute favorite Marian devotions. And it's been with me for the long haul. It goes by a couple of different names. I know it originally as the Servite Rosary or it's the Chaplet of the Sorrows of Mary. And basically what it is is this, is it's seven decades of seven Hail Marys in which you meditate upon the seven sorrows of Our Lady. And before we get into it too much, just let you know that surprisingly, the Wikipedia sections on um, the Servite Rosary and the seven sorrows of Our Lady are really incredible. Again, we'll have the link below. And they even have links to where these sorrows are in the Gospels. So we'll drop that down below. But I'm going to go through them real quick. The first sorrow of Our Lady comes from the presentation when Mary and Joseph go to present Jesus in the temple. Simeon gives his prophecy that a sword will pierce the heart of Mary. So that's the first sorrow of Our Lady. The second one is her, her flight into Egypt as Mary and Joseph and Jesus have to go into exile to flee the slaughtering of the innocents. That's the second. Third is um, the pain, the, fresh, the disorientation, uh, the suffering that Mary endured as she separated for, from Jesus for three days as he's lost in the temple. And then the last four all are dealing around um, sp specifically the Lord's passion. We have the beautiful tradition, pious tradition of the meeting of Mary and Jesus on the way of the cross. That's number four. Number five is the crucifixion of our Lord as nails are hammered into his hands and his feet and a sword pierces Mary's heart as well and the prophecy of Simeon um, is fulfilled. And then we have Jesus' side is pierced with a lance and he dies on the cross and is taken down. And then lastly, we have the bearing of Jesus. Personally, for me, it's been a huge, tremendous source of grace. There's something about it that really engages my affective sort of spirituality, my affective part. Like it just, it kind of, it gets my heart in it. And it really, really brings me to a deeper love, tender love, care for Our Lady. And that opens me up to allowing her to sort of love me with that same, that same tenderness and same aff affectivity. And so I just offer it to you as a way to grow in devotion to Our Lady in a way which maybe um, you haven't been doing before. And then, and then lastly is this, is what about taking a look at, doing a little bit of study, a little bit of prayer, a little bit of reading with one of the approved apparitions of Our Lady. Specifically, I'm thinking of Our Lady of Fatima or Lourdes or Guadalupe. They all have something really beautiful and special to speak to us. So I'm thinking of like, like Fatima, this call to conversion, this call to do penance, uh, Lourdes, this the reminder of the healing power of God and his capacity to make springs run in, in barren land, like his ability to bring life where there's only death and cosmos out of chaos. Um, and then Our Lady of Guadalupe, right? Like Our Lady's love and God's love for the lowly, Mary's role in evangelization. And all of these as well are really, <laughs> like there's tremendous miracles um, around all of these apparitions. It's a, it's a unique way, a fresh way to enter into um, this great mystery of um of mary's relationship with us as christians as mary mother of the church as mary of this 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 mediatrix the special instrument of god's grace in the world i've done my part i've thrown them out there i'm gonna grow in this <laughs> you, you gotta do your part share some of your favorite devotions if you know you've you got a great love to this prayer or that prayer this title of mary that title of our, of our lady let us know what you're doing this month of may let's inform each other let's encourage each other and let's be united in prayer um, with each other. I thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching. Remember, we are pilgrims on this earth. Somos peregrinos poco a poco, little by little. Vamos a llegar. We're going to make it. Thank you so much. See you again next week. All right.